Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today I'm excited to show you guys a bunch of new products that most of the world have probably had for a little while, but these products have actually been unavailable in the United States uh, up until now, basically. In the next couple of weeks, they should be arriving in mass in the United States, and I'm really excited to, uh, to show you what they have. Uh, first off, they have some new diorama type uh, paste, that we'll call them. Uh, some snow, some dirt effect, really, really work well for doing uh, diorama effects or just dirting up your vehicle. Plus the ones I'm most excited about are their panel accent line detailers. Uh, this product I've heard a lot of good things about over the last couple of years and been excited to finally get them in the United States so we can start using them ourselves. And those will come in a black, brown, and a gray color. Plus also now they've come out with two types of decal setting solution, a regular and a super strong version. So always excited to get something like that. And finally, they have their new paint retarder. Uh, this has been really good, and I've heard a lot of good things about this for the one reason. To me, a paint airbrush is beautifully, no, no problems at all with it. But it sometimes has a little bit of a problem because it dries so quickly that it is not very good for hand brushing. And this product right here, by adding a few drops to it, is supposedly will take care of that once and for all. So what we'll do is we're going to put all these products through the paces and kind of show you each one of them and see how they work out. So let's get started on it. Okay, the first two products I'm going to show you are the uh, Tamiya Snow Effects, and this is from their Diorama Texture Paint. Uh, the first one we'll put on will be the, just the regular powdered snow effect. And now I experimented with these a little bit earlier just to see how they work. And they're ver both very, very thick product that you can put on with a spatula or even a paintbrush. And they're acrylic, so you can use their acrylic thinner to thin them down. And you can just put little, little splotches of snow all over your vehicle to give it uh, some three-dimensional depth. But the one I really want to show you a lot of is this snow, just the regular snow effect. And this one's actually got a grit inside of it that's, I hope you might be able to hear that. And when that grit goes on and the product dries, it really looks like snow. So what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll work with that playing around with that. But here's some I've done on the back already. Zoom in. And this is the, the regular snow effect, and you can actually see the crystals formed on it. it looks very much like snow, and this is the side that is the, the powdered snow effect. So it's a smoother surface, which might look better on like on ground, or that's, you know, snow that's been built up and melted and type of it. And here's even a little bit more of that regular snow effect. Hopefully you can see it, you can almost see like the ice crystals form inside of it. Very, very nice stuff. I thought I would just show you real quick too, now that this is dried on the front too, another little uh, piece of the snow and in person it just looks incredible. Hopefully it shows up as good on camera. It's rock hard and you can see like the little grain crystals that would look like ice crystals that are informing in it. Very nice. Also being released with the, uh, the snow are two colors of soil effect, a dark earth and a brown and both of them I'm not going to spend much time applying this stuff right now other than the fact we'll just put a little up on the front to show you. But it's got that same amount of pumice and grit inside of it. Both of these are both acrylic so you can add other color to it and vary the amount of color that you have. You can make it darker or lighter depending on what you mix with it. The next group of products I'm excited to show you, and this is something I've actually been waiting for for a long, long time from, to show up in the United States, is, are the, the panel line accent colors. Now, these are actually enamel paints that are normally not brought into this country from, by Tamiya, but they've worked out all of that situation. And they're going to start off with a brown, a gray, and a black. And they're going to be great for weathering, especially, it comes in the same type of bottle that the uh, glue comes in. And so it has the same little fine paintbrush inside of it already, just like the glue does. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you just, just basically how the product lays down. 
We're going to start to apply it to all the little rivet heads and bolt heads, things like that. And the way it goes on with this super fine brush that Tamiya includes with it, we're just going to put a little bit, a little dab basically on top of each rivet head, as you can see me doing right here. And it's all right if a little bit flows over the top. This is an enamel product, and we've completely sealed the vehicle, like I told you earlier, with uh, Tamiya's lacquer clear coat. So that's completely sealed in all of the uh, paint job and stuff. So this stuff will basically be sitting right on top of it for a while. And we'll go around and fill in all the panels, all around all the hatches, things like that. Also all the little... Uh, little rivet heads and nuts and bolts that hold on all the hatches. And like I said, it's a little thick right now, but you'll see what we're going to do with it after it dries for a little while. Now that the uh, stuff has had a little chance to set up, we're going to take a cotton swab dipped in enamel thinner and just lightly go over the top. And what this is going to do, this is going to remove the excess that was floating around out there, but still leave all of the dark uh, wash inside all of the, uh, the little bolt heads, things like that. So it takes a little bit of time, but uh, go over it uh, back and forth and you'll get a nice effect out of it. Now that it's had a uh, chance to dry after we cleaned it up, you can see how nicely it highlights all of these little recessed rivet or bolts as well as all these raised ones as well. And it leaves just like a little bit of like a grime that would be build up on a vehicle over time. And same thing on these bigger rivets as you can, or bolts, I keep saying rivets, excuse me, bolts. Uh, very, very nice stuff. I like the way it worked. It was very easy to work with as well. And we have three colors like I showed you in the beginning. I mainly used just the black on this because I thought it would highlight good against the, uh, the red oxide primer that we have on here already. Next product I want to show you guys. Now this has been available for a while in the country for about probably about six months. But I never actually put it through its paces so I thought I would show you how good this uh, curved masking tape really is. This is the two millimeter one that I have. And what I've done here is I've just taken a piece of uh, styrene and painted it black. And what I wanted to do is show you guys how to do kind of like a camouflage pattern if we wanted to do it like on a World War I tank. Now, this masking tape, unlike others, is super, super flexible. So what I'm going to try to show you so I can get out of the way of the camera here is to show you how tight of a curve... Oops. And that's what, to me, a masking tape, the, uh, the curve stuff can actually do. It's completely attached on there. It has no bubble as it goes around a curve or anything. So it's just some great stuff, especially if you want to do curve camouflage or anything like that, that you want a straight hard line. This is the stuff to do it. Because a normal, normal masking tape will look like this. If you try to take, now granted this is thicker stuff, it just wants to bind up on itself. And no matter what you do, you're not going to get a curved surface. But this is not made out of the same kind of like material this is. This is kind of like a vinyl tape. And like I said, it just goes on really, really well. Okay, the next uh, product I'm going to show you guys that is going to be released in this country is to me is Mark Fit and their Mark Fit Strong. Uh, it's their two decal solutions that uh, are really used to soften the decal to make it to conform to un uneven surfaces. So what I thought I would do is do a little experiment. I've got this, uh, the train outpost thing that uh, really rough surface right here. It's got some nail heads in it, all that kind of stuff. I thought what I'd do is put a, just put a decal on it and just show you guys, see how it works. Now the instructions for this one say that you actually put the stuff underneath the decal. So we're going to put a little blob of it down here. And I've got our decal already wet and ready to go. So we're going to put that on. 
and get it lined up. I am going to take this off after because I do plan on painting this at some point, but uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Now I used the Mark Fit Strong because there is quite a few cracks and creases inside there. So we're going to let that dry for a little while and come back and show you what it looks like. While the decal is uh, softening over there, I wanted to show you this one last product. This is, uh, to me, is paint retarded for acrylic paints. And I am super happy to see this come on the market. Tamiya paints are fabulous at airbrushing, but as most of you may know, they're kind of difficult sometimes to paint larger areas with a brush because the paint dries so quickly. What this is going to do right here, this you put a couple of drops of this into your paint, and I'd probably advise not putting it into the paint like when we normally do the filling up the jar because that whole thing is going to be ready to airbrush. And this is just put a few drops in in a separate area when you're going to do any hand brushing or if you have any bottles that are specifically designed for hand brushing that you're not going to airbrush with. This is going to dramatically slow the drying time down. And because of that, it will not pull up the paint as you do multiple brush strokes. So um, we'll be using it over time right now. I have nothing to hand um, paint right now, but you'll see it in upcoming videos. But just very excited to see this stuff come out on the market. Uh, so and like I said, this should also be out mid-January. Well, I've let the, uh, the product dry for probably about a half an hour. And all I can say is I have found my new decal setting solution. I'm going to kind of get as close as possible right here. Hopefully you can see after just one coat, every bit of the model detail has shown through on the decal. So once we would clear coat this right here, this would look like a painted on piece rather than a decal. Every rivet, every line in the wood, all visible. And that was like I said, just one coat. I did put some on top of it too. I was reading the instructions a second time and it says after you put it underneath, put a little bit on top and then do not, do not touch the decal at all because it does soften it so much that you can damage it if it does. The only thing you can do and that I ended up doing is just taking the uh, a cotton swab and just blotting the edges just to remove the excess just to speed up drying time and then you can always even give it a quick little rub down with that if you think there was an air bubble in there. but. This just is incredible. And like I said, I have found my new decal setting solution, so you'll be seeing it a lot in all the upcoming videos. So here they are. Here are the, uh, the 10 new products that will be arriving in the United States any day now. It's uh, mid-January, and we're expected to have them, like I said, sometime this week for all of my locals that live in the Phoenix area. Plus, uh, hobby shops throughout the United States will be getting them in same time. Anytime this week, they should all start to arrive. Uh, Europe, Japan, the rest of the world, you probably have had these for a few years and probably been enjoying them. And if you haven't, go out and try them because they are fabulous products. Really enjoyed it. Can't wait to use them in more video builds. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. I really appreciate the millions and millions of views this channel has received over the last year, plus the thousands of kind comments that, uh, that you guys have given to me and suggestions. I do read all of your comments and suggestions, and I appreciate them. Unfortunately, I don't always have time to answer all of them. I try my hardest to, but I'm a one-man show sometimes, and it's, it's hard to do all the answering stuff, but I really do appreciate all of that stuff. Also, I want to talk to you about uh, when I do the model build, a lot of times it, we, it's kind of a fluid process, we'll call it. And what, by, what I mean by that is when I start something off, I, I might have a certain direction that I'm going with the video build. And then as I build through the video and, and build through the model, I just I might change my mind a little bit. And a perfect example is this, uh, the Krupp Rahmer that we built uh, just recently. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was going to paint it half camel, half red oxide primer. I Once I got the Mission Models Red Oxide Primer on it, loved the way the front of it looked so much, I just went ahead and painted the entire thing. I just thought it looked so cool that way. Uh, completely different. It's not like you guys haven't seen me done a lot of camouflage over the last year too. So I just thought something different would do it on. So that's all of it. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching as always and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.